I'm Patrick Doherty. I'm a sculptor. Have a great website at stickwork.net. I live in North Carolina and I travel widely with my work. I've gotten a lot of opportunities, so I've been able to work around the United States and as well as some work in Asia and, and a lot in, in Europe. So uh, I could cast back to childhood play because we did a lot of fort building and uh, messing around in the woods and probably some of the inception is there. And you know, as kids play, they kind of recreate the, our hunting and gathering past, all the atavistic things we know underneath, um, but we really don't recognize we know those things. Um, I always think this work is done simply you just go to the woods, you get some sticks out, have a pair of clippers, you can build castles, you can build pyramids, you can do all kinds of things without very many tools and uh, with just your, you know, your inspiration driving you. Well, you know, uh, we took a walk around the, the Wild Center and we saw an area where kids play under the pine trees. And one thing that was said was, well, we, we try to give uh, elements and we try to uh, uh, put out material here that's suggestive, that causes the kids to have certain oh, no. flashes of imagination. I think that each site that I look at I try to see what's unique about it and what I might be able to do there that I couldn't ever do anywhere else. Uh, so I'm looking at the resource of the site. I'm also um, very concerned about the scale that would be required. So that as, as we experience the site and learn more about it, um, we're able to counter correct our piece to seem like it has uh, an integral feeling with the site, you know. Uh, we're looking at a site that has a lot of pine trees in it. Uh, it's uh, got moss on the ground. Uh, the trees are tight in there. It's a very tight site. So, you know, I was immediately considered whether, uh, given the weather here and given the ground situation, um, since this was a moraine and has lots of boulders in the, in the ground, whether we might use the trees as stabilizing forces. So uh, arriving, we looked at the site, uh, re realized that there was a better orientation than we had thought, a little bit uh, about how we could uh, work within this spot that was cleared. We wanted to use the trees as somewhat of a support, or at least join into them to seem like we had grabbed hold of the site a bit. So that, uh, that ended up to be something that was one of our parameters. The other thing is uh, uh, trying to decide how high it should be and what would be something that could be seen from the walkway over here. Uh, we also wanted to make a courtyard so that a uh, number of people could go inside at the same time. All of these things started setting up the parameters for what would be a good thing to have. We've just, I've just used about every kind of hardwood uh, and try to find a patch of it that seems really consistent, that's growing at the same rate. So if I try to gather maybe from one woods or one field or one place so that I can get the material to look fairly uniform. We're cutting uh, young maples and what we're cutting is on the right away of a road they're going to be cut anyhow to open the road up. It's in the Adirondacks owned by Mopus, and it's, they manage the forest. Some of this has already been cut a few years ago, but it's going to be due to be rethinned within the next five to 10 years. Normally, when you come through to, to go back through here to open the road up, you would just cut it and lay it beside the road. All right, when we told the fellows that what we were going to be doing, they just looked at me 
And they go, no problem. Well, normally they're wind machines. Very seldom do they use a chainsaw anymore. What you find out about sticks is that they have an inherent method of joining. When you start dragging this through the woods, you see it entangles and everything. So that's really joining. So, uh, like if I come down here on top of this, I'm going to crush it. See, I'm Since sticks are tapered, if you organize those tapers in one direction, it, it enlivens the surface. It makes it look like that it's moving a little bit. It's animated. And uh, that animation adds to the sense that that these things have vitality in and of themselves, kind of inherent growth going on there. Making some real progress now. Yeah. We got number three underway. We've got these first two, we're working on them. Mm -hmm. Try to figure out what we're, uh, how they're supposed to look. We're coming up with an idea as we work. I think it looks like we want it to look like it's moving that direction all the way around. So today we have the staff working for us, so that's <laughs> been great as well. You'd like to make a site seem like there's more to it than there was when the sculpture went in, and you like to see that the sculpture looks a whole lot better for being in that site. You know, you have a lot of snow, so uh, we wanted to make more peaky uh, blade-like roofs that uh, would shed the snow. We had some openings in the top, as you'll notice, uh, and that would mean that the snow could fall through. So there was an, an effort to try to take into account weather, uh, the patterns of your guests here, uh, the scale, uh, something that looked auspicious and could be seen from the walkway over there, uh, Something that had a bit of an inherent interest that looked like it moved uh, in a kind of a big circular way um, that you could go in and go in further. That fact that you could go through these uh, little kind of bivouacs and then move into the center courtyard and back out. Initially, working with organizations, um, we had the idea that we would get volunteers to help us gather. But it didn't take too long before the volunteers were unsatisfied with gathering and said, why can't we help you? And we, we've got this idea of making something uh, that has a bit of a fence to it. It's not really a fence, but a flying wall. It kind of wallows around in here and then attached to it are these little walk-in spaces. And those walk-in spaces are meant to kind of lean up against sets of trees in various places. So it'll, it'll kind of interact with the, it'll probably go up in this tree over there, but it might lean on that tree. Here today, because my wife is an art teacher at a middle school down in the Hudson Valley, and part of her curriculum is to teach environmental art. So knowing, the area and realizing that this opportunity came up, yeah. she was very interested in wanting to participate and this way she can go back and say that she actually helped create a structure like such and, uh, and it was a good feeling for her. How many leaves? We can't count that high. We just do it. We don't count. <laughs> Right into the, yeah. And so you're just going to make a, a mini weave in here, and you can go back here, cover this, okay. and over here, we, we really would like to see less of this okay. and have more fill. Yeah, okay. And so, so soothing. Working with Patrick and working on the on the sculpture feels like um, like I'm resetting something in myself. You know, everything from sort of the, the symbolic action of stripping away 
the material that's no longer needed to taking what's left and, and reweaving it into a different shape with the, with the flow and the movement that he sort of demonstrates and, and lays out. Um, mm -hmm. It just feels really, I want to say even cathartic, especially after this last. What I'm intrigued by is the process he uses in order to do the layout and the initial structure work and then what it means to to fill that out to make the piece work as a work of art. Yeah. I love working with the organic because I can just let it go and, mm -hmm. and follow the, the project rather than being in charge of it. But here I can see both. I can see how he's letting the nature take its own course, but then he is in charge. <laughs> and that's, that's a great skill and not many have that. And I love it because I feel like it just sort of reminds us like what that kind of space or that kind of relationship can feel like. You know, and we watch the people interact with us from, from, the, from the walk and the conversation among the volunteers and then actually walking through the sculpture, there's a sort of like hush and, and a sort of stillness that it invites us to come into in ourselves. And it's just such a pleasure to be working with it. But also we need the help. We have to put a lot of sticks in there. And so at a, at a point we're all doing the same work. They get to kind of participate in helping build beauty and uh, interest and uh, try to organize something that is compelling and that makes people come running. Uh, the board has helped us, the, uh, just the general public. And uh, that's gone very well. Of course, we couldn't have done it without Leanne and the staff here where this is the last, uh, nearly the last day, but probably maybe the last working day. So we've been putting the mulch in, we've doing our final touch up. We've had a lot of people tucking the wild ends in and going around and uh, taking mud and putting over the cut ends that you could see to kind of blend the whole piece together. I'm really happy. I think that it's uh, turning out to be a great piece. Uh, you know, we, uh, one of the staff here uh, gave it the great title of hopscotch since this is the scotch pine forest and the, we've got a bit of uh, momentum in this thing that I think that hopscotch is a great title. I always say the, the uh, value of one artist to another is not what you hear them say, but what it makes you feel when they say it. A good sculpture is one that causes lots of personal associations that you can have starting points so that you, you, know, you might see a bird nest, you might think of a, a walk in the woods, you might think of your first kiss. That might not be what the sculpture is necessarily about, but it gives you a starting point. It gives you a way to have some personal feelings about the object. Uh, it's clear that uh, the work like this makes you think about the environment, makes you think about nature makes you think about the relationship you have with it or want with it. So I, I see that as people enjoy my work, I feel like they're cast back to some of their better moments in, in the natural world and thereby you know, it gives meaning to the fact that uh, wild places are important. So the efforts now to identify place and to try to do some preserving, I mean, it might be uncomfortable for us in this minute, but in the long run, 
our children, they're really going to appreciate it.